If you own a terrible cheap LED flashlight that you hate, that whispers you evil commands at night, chances are it probably has a zoom feature. Or a zoomy, as some people call it. Oh, you do have one, huh? And what's that you say? It has kept you from buying more LED flashlights because you think they're all cheap junk that rattle and are given out along with curses on dark October nights by one-eyed crones wearing rags for clothes. Wait, what? Oh, I'm sorry. Do you mean eBay? While one of your problems can only be solved by a priest, I think, the other one is getting a better quality zooming flashlight from Brynite called the B158. That is, unless you're totally not into Zoomers, Zoomables, Lunchables, Zoomies, Miley's, or whatever the hell most people call them. I guess the proper term for the light is a zooming aspheric flashlight because of the aspheric lens and, you know, it zooms and shit. But to be honest, you could call it Diane and that would still be fine. But it would probably still be weird. Okay, so what makes this Miley, I'm sorry, Zoomy, Zoomy, or better yet, Aspheric zoom, better than any other one. And also, are they really cursed? And is Miley a trigger word for an unsubscribe? Well, as far as I know, they're not cur cursed. <clears throat> cursed. And it's because it includes several features that appeal to people who modify or weapon mount their flashlights. So what do zooming aspheric flashlights do differently than any other light? Well, it allows you to go from flood to throw, you know, all in one light. So you can focus a light on distant objects or light up a very wide area evenly in front of you without much of a big hotspot. You know, because of the aspheric lens on the front of the light. Sounds like I'm saying aspheric, huh? Okay, so what's so dope about the B158? Well, it's covered in a Type 3 anodization and made from heavy-duty aircraft-grade aluminum. Okay, now do a shot. It zooms by twisting the rear of the light. This allows the light to be more water resistant than other zooming lights because of the double O-rings along the zoom tube. So you're good to use it in the rain because of its IPX8 standards. So let's see how well it does work in water because some people don't think zooming flashlights work well in wet situations. So I did this short test with the hose, clicking the button, zooming and unzooming the light several times underwater all while thinking positively. And upon taking the light apart, found the interior of the battery tube bone dry and no moisture inside the head. So it was a success. The B158 is also super mod friendly, even though it doesn't have a weird haircut or listen to British invasion music. It can be taken apart very easily and quickly because it uses a modular pill system. So you can swap out different LED slash driver combinations in a snap. Plus, all threads are anodized, so they should provide long wear if you disassemble it often. This includes the main body tube, the head, and the pill module, and the tail cap. You can get a standard white LED module from the factory, a green LED module, or a red LED module. The pill is large and made from solid brass, and despite the name, you can't swallow it unless you're an idiot or have acquired a taste for brass. I said it was mod friendly, right? Yes, because it uses a standard 16 millimeter LED MC PCB size, or it can fit it, you know, in the top part, and a 17 millimeter driver, which can be bought at many places online for people who want higher output drivers or different tinted LEDs and can solder a few wires like it's no big whoop. So check out Mountain Electronics if you're looking for different LEDs or drivers. Okay, so how about some dimensions and weight? And please don't judge the flashlight, it's sensitive. First, the light. Then the diameter of the lens. And how about the weight? The light also has a few other cool features for people who would like to mount this on a weapon. And please don't call your arms a weapon. Unfortunately, I have an old 22 that has a different size rail mount and was included with this light, but I'll give you some info to see if it works for you. The rail mount is a 22 millimeter wide mount, at least the one that they gave me, but you could swap it out with a different one if you choose because the light has threaded bolts under it. Don't worry, they will not allow water ingress into the light because they don't go all the way through the body tube. The center of each of the two bolts are about 15 millimeters apart from one another. Also, Brynite has an optionally available momentary on switch, which I actually have here and I'll show you how to put it in. You need to disassemble the tail cap and swap out the switch to do so. I found a pair of 
Tweezers worked best for me. So here's how it works. You tap it and it turns on. As soon as you release it, it turns off. Okay, so let me do a bit of testing of the included LED modules with the light. Because this is a review, right? The included white module has five modes and is cool white with an XML2 emitter. Three constant output modes and the other two, you guessed it, that strobe. The light output changes depending on if you have it in spot mode or flood mode, so the lumens are a little bit different. I will include figures for both the white and red module. First is white at full flood. On low. On medium. And on high. And we have spot. On low. On medium. And high. Then there's the Siemens favorite, SOS, and just, I don't know, tactical strobe or whatever. Cool, the red module has only two modes. Here is flood on low and on high. Then here is spot on low and on high. There is PWM on the low mode that's visible because it's a lower frequency, so you can kind of see it if you know what to look for. I did not detect visible PWM with my eyes on any of the other modes on the red or white modules, so it shouldn't bother you. Okay, so finally I'll give some run times on high on white and red. I used the 3000 milliamp hour Brynite included with my review sample. All right, first up is white mode on high. White runs for about an hour and 20 minutes before it just goes into a crazy blinking mode, well not crazy, slow blinking mode until you turn it off. Ending voltage when I finally shut it off was about 2.8 volts. Then red, red runs pretty constantly for about two and a half hours before just shutting completely off. All right, and finally the beam shot section. I shine it on my shed and some trees, set the camera to manual and all the lights on their highest output mode because flashlight science. You'll see the Brynite does a great job of providing a pinpoint of light on distant objects even better than the throwers with a higher output. Also, I threw in the Noctagon Meteor just to make things unfair. So from this test, it's pretty obvious to see the Brynite out through all the brighter lights. Remember, when it's zoomed in, it puts out less lumens, but it throws way more better than all the other lights. The only problem is the zooming aspherics will show the pattern of the emitter when zoomed in, which is why it's a square. If you're not a square and it doesn't bother you, well, good for you. But this is why a zooming a spheric light is popular, because they're adjustable. I mean, I think, but actually I really don't know because I'm just an idiot on YouTube. But there are some non-zooming spheric lights. They're specialized lights that project thin beams very far distances, but you really don't see many of them because they live in caves. Cool, what else to know? Well, this is the nicest zooming light I have encountered. Most are absolute garbage, which you well know. So it's nice to see one that can easily be modded and that has no rattle and pretty tight machining tolerances. And also that, you know, is not cursed. The momentary on switch is handy for weapon mounting, as are the threaded holes to add a rail mount for the light. While you can just buy the light without the accessories, Brynite included a bunch of different stuff for me to test out. Okay, so what about a drop test? Does it cut off if I drop it? So as you can see, while I stand like a weirdo in my front yard throwing up a flashlight late at night with a camera pointed at me, it survives reasonable drop tests well. It shut off once because the button was pressed by something on the ground. I don't think it was a ghost, but I can't be sure. Oh man, what kind of video would this be if I forgot to go over the user interface? Well, it'd be shorter, so some people may thank me for that. The B158 employs a forward clicky switch with momentary on. Click it once to turn it on. To change modes, you can do it one of two ways. Either short momentary clicks from off till you find the mode you want, then push it all the way in to get to the mode you're on, or do a rapid full on and off click to find your mode while the light is on. You have to do it quick. The B158 does have mode memory on the white and red modules. For mode memory to work, you'll need to leave the light on for at least two seconds. Any less than that, it goes to the next mode. Cool. Okay, finally, thanks to Brynite for providing this light for review. If you like this video, make sure you browse my channel for more like it. 
and subscribe for all kinds of cool outdoor gear review like headlamps, flashlights, knives, and who knows what else. Also, make sure you leave me comments or ask me questions below the video. All my reviews are real world tested, so hey guys, thanks for watching. And girls too. Although, my stats show that I only have like a 3 or 4% female viewership, so, you know, that's understandable. Alright, cool, bye.